G'day guys, a large mass M1 and a small mass M2 is connected to a pulley. Find the angular acceleration of the pulley. So what's happening here is we've got this strange looking pulley with an outer radius capital R, and wound around it is a rope connected to this large mass M1, and it's also got this other groove just here, which has a radius lowercase r, and wound around it is this smaller mass M2, is a rope connected to the smaller mass M2, okay? And we're asked to find the angular acceleration of the pulley, okay? So the first thing you need to know here is we're going to assume a frictionless bearing, which means that we don't need to worry about resistance counter torques or anything like that. We're going to keep this problem as simple as we can. Okay, and we're also going to assume a moment of inertia about the pin of the pulley is equal to I. Okay, so without any further ado, let me actually just get started on this problem by drawing a free body diagram. So let's start by drawing our pulley and let's make cut sections along here. So basically our free body diagram is all that encompasses this area just here. Well, if you were to draw the free body diagram then, you'll have to make cut sections here and here, which means tension forces in both of these ropes, T1 and T2, will be popping out, okay? Now notice it would be a mistake to assume the tension forces in both of these ropes are the same, for starters, because they're different ropes, okay? Now is that it? No, it's not. We've also got reaction forces on our pin just here. So we've got a reaction force OX just here, and we've got a reaction force OY just here. Okay, now is that it? No, you've also got a force due to gravity acting down on your pin due to the mass of your pulley itself. So I'll say the mass of the pulley will be MP, and we're going to times that by G to get the force due to gravity. Okay, notice that because we assume a frictionless bearing, we're not going to be dealing with counter torques about 0.0. Okay, all right, so now we're ready to get started. What we're going to do is we're going to use this formula, the sum of moments about point O is equal to I O alpha, right? And I'm going to assume that counterclockwise is positive, right? So that basically means that any force that causes a moment in the counterclockwise direction will be considered positive. In the clockwise direction, it'll be negative, okay? So let's see, what are the two forces which produce moments? It'll be this one and this one. None of these forces will produce moments about point O, right? That's because they pass through point O, okay? So let's see, this will produce a moment of T1 times by its perpendicular distance, this distance just here, which will be capital R, okay? The advantage of having a circular pulley, right? And the moment produced by this force will be negative, right? Because it's in the clockwise direction, which is negative by convention. So it'll be negative T2, and we times it by its perpendicular distance, which is lowercase r. And that's going to be equal to IO alpha, which is actually the moment of inertia of your pulley, which is just I, times by alpha, your angular acceleration of your pulley. Alpha, okay. So we've got three unknowns and one equation. Not good. We don't know what T1 is, we don't know what T2 is, and we don't know what alpha is. We need more equations. So to do that, let me draw our a large mass, M1, just here. And let me draw the forces on it. Well, of course you're going to have a force downwards due to gravity, which will be capital M1G, but you're also going to have your tension force on your rope pulling the block up, right? Equal and opposite forces, right? Now, same with our smaller mass, we're going to have the same thing. We're going to have a force due to gravity downwards, which will be M2G, and you're going to have your tension force T2 up like this. Now, just using your intuition, you should be able to tell that this larger block will actually be accelerating downwards. So for convenience sake, I'm going to say that your acceleration of this block is going to be A1 and it's going to be downwards, right? And as you can tell, if this thing's rotating like this, then that means that this mass must be accelerating upwards. So I'm going to call the acceleration of this smaller mass A2, and it's going to be upwards like this. It's, it's useful to use intuition as well in these types of problems, so you don't need to deal with pesky negatives all the time, okay? So now we're ready to start applying Newton's law. The sum of forces acting on an object is equal to the mass of that object times the acceleration of that object. Let's do this block first. We know, we know that 
because this thing's accelerating downwards, right? Well, we've assumed it's accelerating downwards. That means then our this force will be positive by notation, right? So this will be m m one g, right? And this force will actually be negative now because it's upwards. So this will be minus t1. This is the benefit of defining your axis like this. I'm defining it positive downwards here, right? And the reason I do that is so that on the right hand side, we're just going to get the mass of our block, which will be capital M1 times by your acceleration A1, right? If you wanted to, you could have defined this thing upwards, but you would have had this thing all reversed, right? Not a big deal, but you would just have that, okay? All right, well, that's another equation. Let's call this equation one. Let's call this equation two, right? In fact, let me, I'm get for, I'll show you why I'm moving this number two to the right just here. I feel like we can expand this out shortly. Let's now apply the sum of forces is equal to ma for our second block. Well, t2 will be positive in this sense, so it'll be t2 just here, and it'll be minus m2g. It'll be minus m2g, and that's going to be equal to your mass, which will be m2 in this context, times by your acceleration, which is going to be a2 just here, a2 just here. Now. Hopefully you'll see why I moved this over to the right. I wanted to make space for something. We need to know what A1 is and we need to know what A2 is, all right? And to do that, we need to use the help of circular motion, okay? We know that the acceleration of this larger block is going to be the exact same as the angular acceleration of this rope going around this pulley just here. And of course, the tangential, if you'll remember from circular motion, the tangential acceleration of a circular path is just alpha r. So we can write this as m1 times by, in this context, it'll be alpha times by capital R, right? Because in this context, the radius is capital R. In this context, however, it'll be m2 times by alpha, right, times by lowercase r. Right? That's, that's the tangential acceleration of the rope at this point just here. So this will be alpha times by lowercase r. And this can be equation three. All right, guys, the hard part is done. Now it's just mathematics. We need to solve these three equations simultaneously to substitute out t1 and t2 and solve for alpha. So to do that, let me resize everything for you. There we go, guys. I've resized everything for you to make some space. So the game plan here is to substitute out T1 and T2 into this equation to solve for alpha, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in one giant step. I'm just going to focus on equation one just here and I need to find T1, right? And I'm gonna get that from equation two. And I'm gonna do this in one go, so bear with me. T1, if you solve for it, if you bring that over to the right-hand side and bring this over to the left-hand side, it's gonna be M1G, M1G, and then minus, minus M1 alpha R, alpha R, right? That's gonna be T1, this is the entire T1 expression just here, and we're gonna times that by big R just here. Okay, now let's deal with this part, it's gonna be minus T2. Well, what is T2? Well, T2 can be found by just bringing this M2G over to this side. It's gonna be, let's see, it'll be, m2 alpha r alpha r plus plus m2g right that's going to be t2 this is t2 times by lowercase r times by lowercase r and that's going to be equal to that's going to be equal to i alpha just here so just so there's no mistake here what's in the bracket just here is this is t2 and what's in the bracket just here this is t1 Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, the beauty of doing this is we can bring all the alphas to the right-hand side and factor out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on the right-hand side now. I'm gonna put alpha here, and I'm gonna substitute everything else out. So we're gonna have an i here, right? And then if we bring this over to the right-hand side, we're gonna have plus m1 r squared. It's gonna be plus m1 r squared r squared. And what about this one? It's going to be plus plus m2 lowercase r squared. Lowercase r squared, right? So far so good. 
And now what's left on this side will be, will be, let's see, you'll have this term, which will be M1G capital R. It'll be M1G capital R, right? And what about on this side? It'll be minus, minus, don't forget the minus here. It'll be minus M2G lowercase r. Minus M2G lowercase r. Okay, is that it? I think that's everything. So now what we need to do is we need to divide by this beast and bring it under here. And let me do that as fast as I possibly can because this is more or less trivial. We know that alpha is going to be equal to M1G R minus M2G R all divided by all divided by this beast, which is going to be I plus plus M one R squared plus plus M two lowercase R squared. This is your answer. This right here is your answer for your angular acceleration of your pulley. We did it. We did it. And notice because we assumed counterclockwise was positive and because we're going to assume that this term is going to be positive as well, that means this thing does actually have an angular acceleration in the counterclockwise direction. You could plug this in for particular values and I promise you'll get that. Okay, guys, that's this problem done. I hope you really learned something. The general policy is use as many formulas as you can and solve simultaneously. Hope that made sense, guys. Cheers.